Air brake tanks are part of powerful brake systems on tractor trailers and buses. When the driver depresses the brake pedal, the tank releases the compressed air to activate the brakes, so the big wheels slow down and stop turning. The energy used to stop a big rig comes from air. It's compressed and stored in the brake tanks, so there's always a ready supply. They make air brake tanks from industrial grade steel that's about as thick as a typical magazine. A press forces the steel around a domed form and shears the edges to produce the tank's end caps. It also punches a hole in each cap for a fitting. The cap's dome shape is critical. It will allow it to withstand the air pressure inside the tank. The tank caps now ride a conveyor under sprayers that wash away residual oil from the pressing process. More steel sheeting feeds into another press. It's twice as thick as the steel used to make the end caps. This press is punching and forming brackets for attaching the air tank to the trailer undercarriage so these connecting parts have to be extra strong. It takes six punches to shape the flat sheet of steel into the curved brackets. Here's an example of the six formative stages. Machinery now flattens and cuts bigger sheets of steel for the tank body. Mechanized clamps grip the sheet along the edges and position it under another punch press. It perforates the steel where fittings are to be installed. It also stamps the company name and other manufacturing information onto it. They feed the sheet to a roller that curls it into the cylindrical tank shell. The rolling is precise and the dimensions of the cylinder don't need any adjusting. The worker clamps it into a fixture. A carriage moves the welding torch overhead to join the ends and create an airtight seal. A worker inspects the weld. The next worker welds fittings onto the holes punched into the tank shell earlier. Two of the fittings are for attaching valves that control the flow of compressed air. The third fitting will be used to connect a line for draining water formed during air compression. He reinforces the fittings with large collars that help the connections withstand any bumps on the road. He places the brackets and end caps in an automatic welder and activates it. It fuses the bracket to the cap, one for each of the air tank's end caps. With both bracketed end caps now installed on the cylindrical shell, it's time to seal this air tank. The tank turns on a welding lathe as automated welders bond them to the shell. The air tank structure is now basically complete. It's time to put it to the test. After plugging the open fittings, they pump highly compressed air into the tank, more than it would usually handle. If it can take all the pressure, it's deemed structurally sound. They bring the pressure down a bit and check for leaks. Bubbles in the water around it would indicate air is seeping out. But in this case, there are only a few ripples from the action of placing it in the water. After a cleaning, the airtight tank heads into a powder coating station. Sprayers apply the powdered resin coating to the tanks. The particles are positively charged and the tanks are negatively charged for an instant attraction. The black powder clings to the tanks as they now travel through a gas-fired oven. The heat melts and bonds the coating to the surface of the air brake tanks, forming a tough skin that's rust-resistant. After the tanks cool, a worker inserts a long, thin paint gun through one of the fittings to spray a rust-proof coating on the inside. He then inserts plugs into all the fittings to protect the threads from damage until they're ready to make all the necessary connections. It's taken about five hours to produce these air brake tanks, and it's now time to put on the brakes. <laughs>